And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. Welcome to the Reasonably Fine Art Talk. It is uh, November 8th, 2023, and this is the 100th Reasonably Fine Art Talk. I <laughs> thank you. I thank you so much for uh, being interested in hearing me blather about art and uh, you've stuck with it and we, our audience has grown and uh, it's it's been a blast uh, and I plan to keep doing these because I love, I love talking about art. And uh, today I thought what I would do, because you guys seem to enjoy this, is talk a little about the most recent uh, event I've just did, which was Plein Air, Texas, uh, in San Angelo, Texas, uh, what, what, about two weeks ago, about two weeks ago. Um, hi, folks. Hi, Jim. Hi, as people are coming in, it is lovely to see you all virtually. Um, and let's see, I will start. I, I left Vermont. I left my home and family. I was no more than a boy in the company of strangers in the quiet of a railway station running scared, as uh, as Paul Simon would say. But what I did was I left Albany, New York on Amtrak's Lakeshore Limited. And then in Chicago, the next day, I transferred to Amtrak's Texas Eagle. And here's a little picture of my room on the Texas Eagle because as you all know, I am always trying to get people to ride trains. Uh, that is, it's the family room. It's downstairs in the Amtrak uh, Superliner sleeping car. It has windows on both sides of the car. It's the entire width of the car. The windows aren't huge, but uh, it is cool to be able to look out both sides of the train at the same time. So it was just little old me in, uh, in, in the family room, uh, and I had a lovely ride. We arrived early into Fort Worth. Um, the great Betty Sue was on tour in the Pacific Northwest at that time. <laughs> and then while I was in Texas, she was recording in, uh, in Massachusetts uh, with Chris Smither. Um, so, so we did not really see each other very much. We have not seen each other in ages, but I'm going to see her next week. Uh, she's coming up. Um, I'm now trying to remember which. There is the layout I was using. Uh, but anyway, I had a lovely train trip down to Texas. And uh, then I rented a car in Fort Worth and uh, headed out to the ranch. Because the way Plein Air, Texas is doing it, um, this year was we were put up, each of the participating artists were put up at a working ranch for the first three days of the event. Um, and I was out in Brody, Texas, Brady, Brady, Texas, um, and at, on the Quinn Ranch. And here's a picture of the traffic jam. Was ter terrible traffic jams on the Quinn Ranch, which was that you got to the you got to Brady, then you drove another ten miles and you got to the Quinn Ranch, and then it was or the ground the, the gates of the Quinn Ranch. Then you drove two miles to the house, the Quinn's house, and then it was four miles uh, on this dirt track to their hunting lodge. They have a a uh, hunting lodge that you know probably I don't know, about probably about six rooms, seven rooms with two beds in each room uh, that hunters rent, not hunters as Charlie Hunter, but uh, hunters hunting uh, deer and critters. Um, they 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 rent the place, uh, and so it was me, Hector Acuna, uh, Stuart White, and. Uh, Alex, oh, I forget Alex's last name. He's from North Carolina. It's Eisenzumpf, uh, terrific pastelist. So we had we had like a clubhouse for like three days, four days uh, at the very beginning. Uh, I'm showing here the back of my rental car. Got a nice hatchback, which worked very, very well. It was a compact SUV. Um, 
I tend to put a, a jacket or some sort of shade over the back window so I can use the car as a brake against the sun. Uh, it's also a good wind break. And if it's raining mildly, uh, the hatch will protect uh, my work from getting wet. If it's raining with wind, it won't. But in this case, uh, it worked It worked fine. We had a little bit of rain in San Angelo, but it was not a big problem. The painting over there on the right was the first painting I did uh, just of some mesquite scrub, a little six by eight painting. Uh, and I was lucky enough to have that one sell. The second painting I did was this six by 12. Um, I show here both the actual scene, then a cropped version of that actual scene that pretty much approximates what I was painting in my, in my six by 12. I was very, very happy with this six by 12. Uh, to reiterate what my goal is when I do one of these uh, plein air events, my goal is to take advantage of the community of painters and to be in this uh, hunting lodge with three first rate painters where we could really in the evening sit around and talk about materials and approaches and stuff. It's really, there's no overstating how, how wonderful that is. Cause you know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you try to talk about substrates to normal human beings, you can just see their little eyes glaze over. And instead I was with three people and all we wanted to do was talk about substrates. We had a great time. Um, the other things that I look to do, the other that I get out of doing these plein air events is the eye-hand coordination. My job every day is to get up and do a morning painting and an afternoon painting. That is that is my job. And after seven days of doing that or eight days of doing that, you're in good shape. It's, it's like doing... Uh, you know, physical exercise or musical scales. You're in fighting trim after a week of doing this. This painting, um, oh, and I work monochromatically as opposed to working full chroma because I really want to work on values and edges. That is my, that's part of my my job, my process, my exploration when I'm doing these events. How do I tell the story without relying on chroma? And this, this painting I, I was really happy with and I was really happy with, note in the center of the painting, the gradation of the value of the shadow uh, on the road. Uh, I really like that because it, it integrates the, the brush coming up, the, the branches from the scrub coming up into the shadow are kind of the same value as the beginning of the shadow. And then the shadow gets darker and the shadow after that is fully dark. And I think that transitions the eye into those sharp shapes very, very well. Note also that I am really trying to vary the brush marks. I'm trying not to have areas of the painting look the same, the same, the same. The colors I am using are my usual plein air colors of Cobra water mixable oils, rem, uh, Van Dyke brown and raw umber. Um, I also use some titanium white later in the week, and I'll try to remember to point that out when I uh, do that. But I was very happy with this painting. Uh, it didn't sell, um, so to hell with it. Uh, but uh, this one made me happy. It made me feel like I was getting into good shape. So that was the second painting first day. Day two, went out again and did another small uh, six by eight. 
uh, one of the aspects, a lot of these plein air events now ask artists to do a, uh, at least one small painting and they do a small painting Sunday. It's like, it's like Taco Tuesday, small painting Sunday. Um, this was of the gate uh, right by the ranch, uh, right by the, the, the hunting lodge. Um, and again, it shows how I work out of the back of my, uh, out of the back of the rental car. That's my Soltec easel and my normal painting rig. I'm just checking to see uh, some comments. Hey, Betty Sue's watching. Hi, Betty Sue. Um, <laughs> Betty Sue is answering Liz where the heck San Angelo is. San Angelo is not near anything, but it's not terribly far from everything either. It's about, it's a, well, Betty Sue says where it is. It's in the middle of Texas. There's a lot of Texas too, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of Texas. This was another painting that I worked on simultaneously. This was a 10 by 20. Um, the smaller version of it uh, in the upper right, that is the monochromatic painting. Uh, what I was fascinated with was the, the kind of the backlighting of these trees, um, the harshness of the landscape, yet it still has this beauty. And so I did the underpainting, the 10 by 20, and then I did a little bit of glazing with color uh, so that the glazes are transparent oxide red. You can see that in the center, kind of in the shadow area beneath the dominant tree. A little olive green, that's the greenish color uh, that, it, that it transitions into to the right and to the foreground. And then some yellow, uh, transparent oxide yellow over to the left, uh, sort of right above where my head is right now. Um, I was pretty happy with this. It's, it's not a perfect painting, but I thought it was an interesting painting. Next slide. Oh, this was the next day. This was my first painting, the second, yes, first painting, second day. So first day I did those two paintings and started on that, uh, that one that I put the glazes on. I worked on that more on the second day. I also worked on this painting. This painting, there was a, a low water crossing, a uh, very rough road set up at, uh, at the low water crossing and just did this. It's a really kind of a sketch, a six by 12 sketch. And it's called, it's called, ladies and gentlemen, I sang to the cows, but the cows went away because I was singing to the cows, because the cows, you know, are curious. And they were like, what the hell is that guy doing? And so I thought they might like a little Willie Nelson. And I sang to them, blue eyes crying in the rain. And I sang sad songs and waltzes ain't selling this year. And partway through sad songs and waltzes ain't selling this year, the cows just kind of drifted away and I lost my audience. Anyway, I had, a, I had a fine time painting this as minimally as possible. This one was on um, ampersand gesso board. Uh, so it, which is a very absorbent uh, surface. It's a lovely, super smooth surface. So I thought of this one more as a, uh, as, as more of a, a sketch than a full painting because texturally, it was, it, the air was so dry and it was so absorbent that the, the paint kind of went down a lot closer to how it does with the watercolor. Um, Edward asks, how does the geography differ from my home geography? Well, it, Texas is a lot different from Vermont, but um, the air, makes sense to me. It does not have, it doesn't, it's not like Santa Fe where, or Northern New Mexico and those high elevations where there's very little moisture in the air, but there's so much light bouncing around. This landscape still had a good uh, range of light and dark values. I understood the values that were going on. When I paint plein air in New Mexico, 
I find it very challenging because the whole atmosphere is so different. Um, oh, hey, Carrie says, tell us about that fabulous easel. Well, Carrie, it's made by um, it's made by hostile Mormons. They're not really hostile. They're just they're 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 they know they have a good product and they're unapologetic about it. It is called a Soul Tech. It uh, the thing that's great about it is it's solid body. It's 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 the legs, the the tripod is part of the body. And it all folds up, weighs about 11 pounds, so it's heavy, especially if you've got paint in it. But it all folds up, and you can unpack it in 20 seconds. Some people have problems with the legs uh, getting bulky, especially if they get sand in them. They're collapsible legs. I have never had that much trouble with them. And I really love how stable it is. And you can do big paintings on it. Uh, it's it's a great easel. It's also not cheap. So, next slide, please. Okay, this was this was my favorite painting that I did that week. It was right out of the doorway. It was right out of the doorway of the uh, of the hunting lodge. Um, this tree, as I think I've said, I sometimes will snap a photograph to make sure that. What I'm sort of seeing in my head is basically works graphically. Um, I do not use the photograph. I don't paint from the photograph, but I do look at the photograph before I start painting to see if what I'm thinking in my head is going to work. So that photograph that's just snapped with the iPhone and switched to uh, silver point, I think. Um, I just, I like the contrast level of that. Uh, and then I set up the car right, in, you know, right near the tree and did this painting. Um, this, the, the, the painting is, it's the completed painting, except I did one change uh, from when I took the photograph, but I don't think I ever took a photograph of the, the changed painting. Over there on the left, that is our friend Stuart White, looking, looking, looking eccentric. I think um, he, at that moment, was heading. He he had his painting easel. He had all his stuff, and he headed out the door. And he said, "I'm going to mosey on down to Brady," and then he moseyed. Um, so he was really he's a lens. He was a, a architectural illustrator from uh, Maryland who now lives in Easton, but boy, he took to being Texan like a, like a duck to water, ladies and gentlemen, like a duck to water. Um, but he suggested, if you look at the completed painting over there on the, on the right, in the upper left corner, he said he thought it was distracting that I ended the roof with the tree branch. So in the extreme upper left, Heath said he thought I should push the roof line up to the top of the painting. Um, I'm going to go back and see. Yeah, if I look at the tree, the photograph of the tree itself, the roof line and that tree branch did meet and it did end there. But and so that is what I depicted in the painting. But then I, in staring at the painting, I agreed with Stuart. And if you look very, very carefully at the picture of me and the judge, I pushed that roof line up to the top of the, uh, of the extreme upper left. This is one of those paintings. It was one of those one in 50 paintings um, where it just really seemed to paint itself. Once I started it, the first, you know, the first half an hour is panic and terror and self-flagellation and disgust. And But if you keep going, you tend to get somewhere. And the second half of doing this painting, these paintings take, this was about two and a half hours, I think. Uh, it just, it really felt like it was painting itself. My job was to sit, but stand back, drink coffee, go hmm, and not overpaint it. 
Uh, there's some squeegee work over there on kind of the, the man-made part of the structure. Uh, the shadows I really was happy with. The foreground, uh, NCY, you know, I, the stuff that you think about while you're painting. I was thinking about N.C. Wyeth. I was thinking about the Hernandez brothers who did the Love and Rockets comic strips, not comic graphic novels. Um, yeah, and yes, of course, as I, I was thinking about all those great watercolorists, even though this is oil. You know, thinking about uh, Andrew Wyeth, thinking about Dean Mitchell, thinking about how how you tell that story and letting the red of the Van Dyke Brown precipitate out of the, the watery slurry that I was using. Um, you will also notice on the middle right on the painting, uh, it grays out very much there. That is using the titanium white. Uh, and it just, it, it basically said, I wanna go there. And so I let it go there. Um, what are the secrets to putting the tree in the center and making it work compositionally. Yeah, you know, I don't consciously have, I don't consciously think about this stuff much because I had, you know, four years of studying graphic, abstract graphic design in college. If there were a few quick secrets you could give that would uh, unlock everything, everyone would be unlocking it. I think what works here is the way that the tree is stitched into the ground. The, by keeping it open in the foreground, the base of the foreground, but with those few black lines coming up from the center, it, it leads the eye into the trunk of the tree. The tree is not an object that serves as a barrier to the viewer. The viewer is climbing up into the sinews of the tree. I think that is primarily why it works. Also, I think the edges, the very close attention being paid to the edges. Note how I let go of the edge of the man-made structure where it butts up against the tree, both when it's super dark and when it's super light. The tree, where the, the man-made structure is super light, the tree has a hard edge, but the structure is let go between the structure itself and the back, uh, the far background. Um, well, let's see what Adele has to say. She used that magic squeegee in my palette and she won Artist Choice Award plein air event. All right, Adele. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Now, one thing I wanted to say about our judge, Judge Grower. He runs the uh, Cowboy Art Museum in uh, Oklahoma City. Uh, and I thought he was a terrific judge. The award I received was an artist choice award. It was the artists, the artists voted on their favorite painting that had been done during the time that we were at ranches and my painting won that. Judge Grower, I don't think liked my art much at all because I he didn't I didn't get boo from him otherwise. But I really I thought his choices were really good. Um, the 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 Vlad Dushev, uh, his first place painting of a of a, of a stream was stunning. Uh, Hector Acuna. Uh, won second place with a really wonderfully innovative piece. Um, really good choices on the part of the judge. It just, he, he weren't buying what I was selling. But uh, I, I, like, I like how all my little friends are wearing cowboy hats in this, these pictures. Um, so let's see. You seem to love the dance between organic forms and straight edges. I do. I do. And and my shorthand for that is things of God, things of man. And Charbonneau, a creature of God, is here. Charbo, you want to come up and say hi? No, he just wants a snack. Hang on just a second. Yeah. 
There you go, Sharps. Got to feed the cats. All right. Next slide, please, Charles. Oh, then then we went <laughs> then we went to San Angelo itself. And my host family, my host family, the um the feller, uh his fa his father had purchased this ranch uh out near El Dorado. It's spelled El Dorado, but they say El Dorado. Uh, not out near El Dorado. And this was an old humble oil pumping station uh, where oil would be transferred. I couldn't, I didn't quite understand what it was, but it was an enormous structure out in the middle of nowhere, very rusted. And he is a bit of a hoarder, ladies and gentlemen. And I say that with great affection and <laughs> he would acknowledge it. That building was full of stuff. And there was a whole lot of stuff outside as well, which you can see in the painting. Um, he, he was disappointed that I didn't put those ventilators that you can see up at the top of the, uh, in the photograph, that he was disappointed I didn't put those ventilators into the painting. But I tried to explain to him that I couldn't get far enough away from the painting to, from the, from the building to really get them into uh, the painting. I mean, when you take these photographs using the cell phone, it, it opens up the space to such an enormous degree beyond what you are actually painting. Because when you're painting, you're basically sight sizing, right? Um, and and I was very happy with this uh, with this with this piece. I thought it 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 came together quickly. What I really like on it is the um, is the roof, the metal roof, all those different textures. Um, let's see, Kelly had a question. Kelly says, in the last three pieces, your skies have a slight gray, white, bluish feel. Did I add some Payne's gray to white? I did, I did in this one. And that's exactly what it was, was a little bit of Payne's gray and white. Um, the one of the um, of the tree. No, that's just a relative cool because the colors that I am using are the my my brown slurry is warm, so it, it makes the substrate appear a little bit cool. And probably because cell phones, which is what I'm using to take photographs with, cell phones always bump. You know, the, the cell phones are, are, are trying to make the photograph exciting. So they always bump things a little bit more. So it probably shifts it slightly more to blue. Um, and next slide. Then we went out to Ballinger. Ballinger. Oh, and that day, that day when I was painting the humble pumping station uh, was rainy. Uh, it was spitting rain. It wasn't, it wasn't pouring rain. Uh, but it was, it was, it definitely, the, the, the sky was moving fast. Ballinger is a small town, small city, medium-sized town, in my scale of things, probably about 5,000 people, uh, about 40 minutes from San Angelo. And it has a railroad track going through it. Uh, what I really like about it, what I was, what I was trying to do here was to do, I just, I loved all the, all the bits of this painting, um, of, of this scene that I was looking at. I loved the railroad crossing. I loved the bumper posts of the old freight yard. I loved the really Texas looking house, uh, in that distance. I love the tilted pole and the kind of, again, the, those harsh trees. And so I did this just as a very kind of linear uh, painting. I, I, I don't think, I, I would give this one a close but no cigar, and I don't think it holds together really, really well. I'm not unhappy with it, but uh, I, I it, it did not come together the same way that that uh, tree painting 
came together. But as I said, that tree painting was one in 50. One in 50 paintings are that effortless. We work the rest of the time and then occasionally God smiles upon us and, and lets something just, just orbit through us, you know? It, it did not, that painting did not feel like I painted it. I felt like I was the agent for that painting happening. <laughs> Kelvin says he used the squeegee at a plein air event and didn't win a darn thing. Oh, uh, and now, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have, um, we have FedEx coming. I knew they were going to come while I was doing this. Hang on. <laughs> I have to sign for a FedEx package. Hey, fine. I'm in the middle of a live stream, so no problem. I knew it would. Have a good day. Me too. Bye bye. Oh boy, oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, boy, oh boy, that's my painting from Jeff Williams. Jeff, Jeff, and I traded uh, during. Uh, at the end of the event. Um, and so UPS, I mean, FedEx just showed up with it. All right, sorry about that. Next slide. This was later in the day, same spot. Uh, I, looked, I looked to the west and painted into the light, another six by eight. Um, I was very happy with this one. This one took about 25 minutes to paint. Um, just simple shapes. Uh, trying to get that late afternoon feel. And I liked how, again, how the red precipitated out of the Van Dyke Brown. This had a lot of, uh, of, of titanium white mixed into it, uh, which is what is giving it that bluish cast. If you use the, if you add titanium white to that Van Dyke Brown, um, it, it really shifts it blue. It's, it's very interesting. Um, but this, this, that was that little painting made me happy. This little six by eight. Then um, another painting I worked on. This is the one that Jeff, uh, wonderful watercolorist Jeff Williams, uh, he took this in trade, and the painting that uh, FedEx just delivered is the painting that uh, that I got, and his painting is beautiful. I'll put it up on my Facebook page, or my. Uh, in, in my Instagram as well, so people can see his beautiful, it's a lovely watercolor of Rowena, Texas. Um, this is downtown San Angelo, uh, South Oaks and Bird Street. And I just like this, this warehouse that was rode hard and put away wet. Um, it was, it's the view right across the street from, uh, from from where the headquarters of the plein air event was. Um, another six by 12. And then, then we had a day at a ranch. We had a day at a ranch and we were painting in public. And the opposite of those paintings that paint themselves, the opposite of those paintings are the paintings that do not paint themselves. The painting that every bit of it is a struggle. And this was one of those paintings. Uh, about two and a half hours, the light, the light was fairly constant. I couldn't really blame the light. I just couldn't, I, that tree was very hard to paint. I think I was a little too far away from it. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I, I was expand, it, rather than sight sizing, I was expanding it a little. Uh, on on the on the uh, surface, and you know, one of my truisms, one of the things I tell myself when I am feeling panicked and uh, miserable about my uh, inability to paint, is keep painting something; it'll get somewhere. It'll get somewhere. And instead, this one, I just felt like I was digging myself deeper and deeper into a hole. Um, it ended up okay. It's okay, but it is not, it doesn't have the grace that uh, I aspire to, um, but it's good. You gotta have paintings like this in order to earn the paintings that, that 
are gifted us, you know? It's just, it is the process. Then let's see, two other paintings. Um, it was raining a lot uh, one day. And so everybody was scrambling to find places to paint uh, that were under cover. Uh, so the upper right one is the uh, San Angelo train station, uh, th which I really liked the painting when I was working on it, but the more I've looked at it, the less happy it makes me. And it's because the proportion is wrong on the boxcar. Uh, it goes too far to the right. The trucks, the, the, the wheels on the right that are behind that post in the foreground, um, they should be a little bit more over to the left. And then on the right, the boxcar really should end. Um, I do like the darkness that is kind of obscured by the corner of the other painting, the 10 by 20, where it says in limbo. This was done up in, um, oh, it's a little town, Miles. It's Miles, uh, which is a 10 miles from, um, 15 miles from uh, San Angelo. Uh, and it has brick streets. Uh, the, the big highway goes, is over to the left. Uh, the street where I was at late afternoon and again, painting into the sun. I didn't end up putting this painting in the show because it, it felt too unfinished. Uh, but it is actually one that has grown on me since. And part of why it grew on me, ladies and gentlemen, is that um, one of the things, the, the wonder, one, a wonderful thing that they had us do at the plein air event was uh, after we'd already submitted all our paintings, uh, we were sent to various schools. And I had, I was sent to a school with a bunch of second graders and they, <laughs> They were the sweetest children. They were the sweetest children ever. And they were so nice and so enthusiastic. And everybody, everybody had a question. Everybody had a question like, they'd be like, and I would say, yes, what's the question? And they'd be like, they, they wanted to be called on. That's really what they wanted, as opposed to have an actual question. But I told them the snail jokes, uh, and any of you who have ever taken workshops from me know the snail jokes, because the snail jokes I learned from uh, the great Fred Eaglesmith, uh, whenever he would break a string or something, needed to kill a little time, tell one of the snail jokes. And uh, boy, the second graders, they really liked the snail jokes. Then, let's see, then uh, the final day, the final day, uh, I did this little six by 12. This is right in front of the headquarters of the plein air event. I just, I was thinking of the, the great David Boyd, who of course we've had on Reasonably Fine Art Talks, uh, David Boyd from Noonan, Georgia, who loves painting alleys, this alley just, was so Boydian, I could not uh, resist painting it. Um, did I did I get teachers' feet? I don't know what teachers' feet are. I know what museum feet are, but uh, my my feet were fine. My feet were fine. Those kids, they were so cute, ladies and gentlemen. The final painting I did. The final painting I did was the quick paint on uh, on on Saturday and that's why I knew that uh, what I was what I was selling the judge weren't buying because I was very happy with this as the quick paint it was an 11 by 14 down an alley it had nice depth it had good shapes uh, I thought it was I thought it was pretty good didn't didn't ring no bells with him um, but uh, it and all the paintings that didn't sell uh, are now at Davis and Blevins Gallery in uh, St. Joe, Texas. Davis and Blevins is run by the wonderful Donna, Donna Howell Sickle uh, and is, is 
kind of between Fort Worth and Wichita Falls, which there's not a lot that goes on there. Um, and I show there mainly because Donna and I both show at McClary in Santa Fe, and she's a wonderful person. And I really appreciate anybody who's trying to, you know, rejuvenate small town America that has gotten decimated over the last 60 years. Uh, so any of you in Texas, I, I, I would love it if you go up to uh, Davis and Blevins and take a look at the, the paintings and see if you can uh, get me on the horn and uh, we can negotiate a good price on those pieces. Um, let's see. So the, the plein, air, uh, plein Air Texas is really a well-run event. Uh, they had us going to places where we were painting in front of the public basically as much as one wanted to do that. You could also go off and paint by yourself as you wished. Uh, extremely well organized, very strong sales. I was not the it boy. I was not the it boy this uh, at this event, but I have nothing to complain about because I did great in, uh, in uh, Knoxville at, at Smoky Mountains. And this one, other people got the chance of being, uh, of doing really, really well. Uh, this was their 10th anniversary. I think they had their best sales ever. Uh, and I won't be doing it next year because I will be, uh, I think, up in Montana at that time. Uh, but it was, it, was, it was terrific. And I, I went up to Montana, and I probably will do a reasonably fine art talk about this, about collecting images for my show next fall. Um, I went up to Montana after Texas uh, and learned a lot about Montana, ladies and gentlemen. Now, lastly, before I go today, before I go today, it is time for everybody to order your 2024 work play every day from Betty Sue. Uh, this is a labor of love that she does. This is my 2023 work play every day. It's a planner. It's a a creativity guide. It is it is a terrific, terrific uh, way to keep track of your life and to keep track of kind of your creative goals. And it's it's whimsical and it is extremely well designed. And it's on sale, I believe, right now. If you order um, the ultimate package, is is on sale. Um, take a look at it. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. That's pretty much what, what we've been up to. Thank you for watching. Thank you. As I say, this is the 100th, uh, and we will see you at the, on the 101st. Um, next week, I believe our guest is uh, the wonderful Kathleen Hudson, who uh, she can paint the hell out of those Texas skies. She doesn't keep them blank like I do. She does. She does sunsets, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you take good care, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.